Yes, indeed. You're very welcome along to the latest installment of Trader Chat with Johnny Ward and Flynn Goward. And since we were last on, has the England bubble somewhat burst in the World Cup? Maybe it has, or maybe they're just um, a little bit uh, inferior than they looked against Iran. And maybe they're a little bit better than they looked against the USA. But is this a World Cup that uh, is going to be won by one of three teams, as I expect it is, uh, which is uh, literally the favourite, second favourite and third favourite. How is it going for Star Sports? Some great results on Sunday, uh, the draw in uh, the Germany-Spain game, obviously a Bino, and what is the uh, outright situation looking like? And uh, later on the show also we'll talk about Constitution Hill, who absolutely wowed everyone on Saturday, and we'll talk about racing in general. Flynn, how are you getting on? Oh, very well, thank you. I'm enjoying the World Cup thoroughly. Um, has it picked up for you? I know you were very downbeat on the World Cup. You were... Uh... Um, I mean, obviously, we're all against the, the human rights issues, etc. But I know that you were very vocal about it. Um, how, how are you feeling towards the World Cup? Are you watching a good bit of it? Yeah, I am. And like, in fairness, the, the football um, storylines are compelling. You know, even uh, one of the, mi the minnows of the tournament, so to speak, Iran, I thought their victory over Wales was, you know, incredible, really, to see the emotion. Um, some of the... Um, I guess the Middle Eastern fans have made a hell of a noise and even like Morocco yesterday, the North Africans out in force. I thought that was, um, you know, that was very enjoyable. Um, I just, the, the whole World Cup itself, I think is kind of sick. And um, the fact that they've, you know, basically just been bought by Qatar who spent ridiculous money on a tournament that I don't think is going to have much of a legacy. But in terms of the football, we have a lot to talk about. I thought Brazil were incredible last week. Messi getting a goal to keep Argentina sort of in the hunt. And um, it has been quite enjoyable to be fair. Oh, good. Well, look, I've enjoyed it. The timings have been great, and it's also been great for the punters as well. Uh, you're 10 o'clock, then you're 1 o'clock, then you're 4 o'clock, and then you're 7 o'clock. Um, it's been absolutely perfect. There's been videos of people in, in their kind of lectures at a university with it on their laptops, and obviously people are advised to work from home so then they can work from home and also watch the World Cup at the same well, time. So. I'm, in a, I'm in a WhatsApp group, as no doubt many of the um, listeners and viewers are with them, um, and it's I think it's called the Cost of Punting Crisis. Um, which is um, fair enough. It's had a few various names. But what you effectively have is either professional punters, people who don't work, or people who work but really don't work, essentially on WhatsApp all day discussing their various punting tribulations from 10 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Yeah, well, look, you've got card markets, you've got corners. You, I've, I've seen people even playing the lines on passing markets. So yeah. um, there are some interesting ones to get involved with. I've quite enjoyed playing the yellow card market. It's just, uh, just, it's, it's a little bit of fun and trying to play a bit of an angle there. Uh, but there's so many different markets to get involved in. So let's just talk about the outright first, because that is obviously the, the biggest market uh, outside of the top goal scorer market when it comes to the World Cup. Uh, Brazil 12 to 5, so uh, just around the 5 to 2 mark. France are 11 to 2. Spain 13 to 2, Argentina 15 to 2, England 9s, and then your 12 to 1 bar that is Germany, the Netherlands, and Portugal, and then your 50 bar that actually. Um, in terms of the book, we've obviously spoken about the bet we've made on Netherlands at 100,000 at 12 to 1. Um, so they're obviously the biggest loser for us. England would be, as you would imagine, uh, the worst winner in the book, uh, significantly actually the most bets laid on England as well. But that's only slightly more than Portugal. We've had a lot of bets on Portugal, so they wouldn't be. I mean, they, they would be a great result because we'd obviously get the 100 grand beat. But none of these teams can win. Like, the none of these three teams can win. It's simple as that. OK, well, that's fine by me because then the field wins plenty. Um, <laughs> Argentina wins plenty. Brazil wins plenty. Uh, France wins plenty. Um, I mean, you messaged me just before, Johnny, saying that you thought Brazil were absolute God-given morals, didn't you? No, I didn't. And what, what, what? I'll be honest. I laid Brazil against Serbia because I I saw Serbia in Dublin um, against Ireland uh, not that long ago in in qualification, and I was like, God, this is a good side. And laid, I actually laid them to the extent that even if Brazil won by a goal, I was still winning money. And I honestly thought this was a great bet, and they were absolutely unbelievable. And I know Neymar is going to miss a couple of games now, but I actually think that won't be any hindrance at all in the sense that. Their, strong, their squad is really strong and he'll come back then a little bit maybe fresher for the for the knockout stages. I have it between Spain, who I wasn't overly impressed with last night, France and Brazil. I'd be edging towards France or Brazil at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I, I quite like France. Um, I actually bet, uh, made my top goal score before the tournament at 18-1 to 1, a few months out. I obviously went off a, bit, a much shorter price than that and then rolled his ankle, which was a good start. But then before France played the other night, and Mbappe was still in there around seven with a few firms. Um, I thought that there was a big overreaction to to Richarlison, which could look silly by the time it goes out because Brazil <laughs> playing 
uh, 38 minutes time. Um, but I thought there was a big overreaction. I thought Mbappe shouldn't be shorter. And obviously, I've got quite lucky. He's got two goals and now he is a favourite of the top goal scorer market. Just while we're on that, just see if we've... Uh, haven't got it up just yet, because we are in between games. The, the next game's about to start. But Mbappe's favourite and then Richarlison's second in. Um, just to talk about some of the boosts we do, we're doing boosts every single day for every single game. Um, if you have a look at the top of the website or the app, uh, you'll get the offers spinning across there. You can swipe across with your finger. Um, so for this game, for example, it's going to be outdated by the time this goes out, but just to give you a flavour of what these boosts look like. Um, Brazil uh, versus Switzerland. Richardson score any time was 5-4, to four, now 2-1. to one. So they're quite decent boosts. We're not pushing a 5-4 to four shot out That's to very eight or 6-4. to four. Um, And then we're also doing, at the start of each day, the kind of favourites on the card all to win. And we're boosting those to be surprised. I've been the four favourites today. Uh, just have a look here. Um, was Serbia, South Korea, obviously, it's actually gone down because South Korea got beat. Um, and Serbia as well. Um, so uh, we boosted that from uh, 11 to 1 to 14 to 1. So some decent boosts in there. So do take a look at that. We've obviously got the offer on the World Cup, which is the two good offer, where we'll pay your bet out as a winner if your team goes two goals up at any stage. I believe that that, um, that would have copped for the, uh, the Ghana game anyway. Um, I, I know the Ghana went on to win, but, but that would have copped early on. Uh, and then in the first game, I believe, as well. So um, too good uh, as cops a couple of times today. So um, do check that offer out if you're having a bet. We've obviously got all the top team goal scorers up, all the possible ones to have up when there's not games on. We've got the, uh, to qualify and to win the groups, uh, the dual forecasts, um, and we've got stage of elimination for England as well. So we've got a fair few outright markets on there. We've got the boost up every day for the World Cup. Um, and we've got loads to look forward to. Well, I think the France will win it. I think Mbappe will be top goal scorer. Now your colours to the mask, Johnny Ward. I'll go with France, um, even though I like. I think I think it's probably between France and Brazil. Um, I think the thing about France is with Dembele and Mbappe, um, it's very very hard to defend against them um, without really being you know with with having any sort of certainty that you've things under control because of the pace they have. And Giroud was that much slower player in the middle. He will score goals and. They're relatively strong defensively. I think Rabiot is playing um, very, very well. Um, as much as Brazil, for me, their performance in Serbia is by far the best anyone has produced. At the prices, I'd probably go for France. I actually, I've had a mixed, um, I've had a mixed World Cup. Like I, I had my smallest bet of I've had in a long time on Costa Rica at eight to one. So if I'd actually had a few more quid on that, um, that would have been grand. But I will say, and this won't be, um, you will have a bit of time to uh, have have a bet on this. I'm just looking at the handicap market in the Netherlands game tomorrow. Um, if the Netherlands are two to eleven to win the match, Asian handicap four to seven minus one and a half. I think that's buying money. There you go. So that's a bet for tomorrow. That's at three o'clock uh, for tomorrow. We're obviously into the last games of the groups tomorrow, so you've got two three o'clock kickoffs and then two seven o'clock England obviously playing Wales. Um, one thing I just wanted to correct for myself last week, we we're talking about a couple of. Big um, anti-post football bets that we'd laid away from the hundred thousand on uh, Netherlands at twelve to one. Um, I said that we'd laid the five grand for Qatar to qualify at four to one. Obviously, that's not going to materialise. So five grand's in the hot. But I also said fifty grand on USA to qualify at four to one, which wasn't correct. It was the USA to get to the quarterfinals. Five okay. grand and, and uh, four to one to qualify would be very very generous. So I did correct it in the comments, but just to let them know. So that's one to just watch out for. Uh, tomorrow as Iran play the USA, which is obviously a huge game, and, and we play Wales. Co uh, currently for the England game tomorrow, Wales 13 to 2, the draw 16 to 5, we're 4 to 9. So um, that's just how we match up. We'll have lots of boosts kind of going on around the England game. So do check that out as we approach tomorrow. Yeah, USA Iran is going to be amazing for obvious reasons. Um, and I actually think, in fairness to the US, I thought they were good against England. England have, um, as much as it was disappointing, and some of their fans blew them off. England are a very good side, and the US possibly even deserve to win the game. So I think they they are in in good nick, and that bet uh, could definitely come up trumps. Let's let's talk racing now, Flynn. It was for me, it was a weekend where the jumps um scene really took off. We had. Proper sort of winter ground, particularly in Navan. We had ground in Newcastle that didn't um, put uh, Nicky Henderson off uh, running Constitution Hill, who I was actually surprised that he was available on the exchanges. He was available at sort of threes on um, prior to the race, in which I was kind of surprised at because, um, you know, if he is going to be as good as people say he is, he should have been short and that to beat Epiton. But even still, wow. Oh, he was so good. Um, I don't mind getting carried away with it either. Um, just because he was so visually impressive. He was so good on the clock. Um, the thing I was most impressed with was his jumping, how slick he was. Um, just barely touched a twig um, on the hurdle and just, he was so quick on the landing side and he was away so fast. He's a big bull of a horse. And 
Um, yeah, he's just an absolute superstar. Can't see anything beating him unless he gets himself into trouble. Um, so Constitution Hill um, is now eight to thirteen from five to four for the champion hurdle. Uh, if it was tomorrow, he wouldn't be eight to thirteen. He would be much much shorter than that. Mm. Um, even coming up against Honeysuckle, um, who's obviously been a fantastic mare and continues to be, but. Um, I think she was half a yard off it all year last year. I remember banging on about the fact she was going to get beat. She didn't get beat, but I think she did run below form. So, um, yeah, uh, 8 to 13, now 4 to 7, actually, because Constitution Hill. So it's been shorted ever so slightly. 4 to 1, Honeysuckle, 6 to 1, State Man. You know, 12 bar, but I think we spoke about this last week that I don't think the depth's there in the champion hurdle for these. You kind of go, uh, we had it for a few years where they were all around this level, and then Honeysuckle brought it up to here, and now I feel Constitution Hill's brought it up to here. But away from these two, you can, you've got State Man and then Vauban. They don't really know what they're going to do with Vauban. So get hard. Mm. I imagine they'll go chasing now. Pie Piper. I don't really know what they're going to do with him. He might be making up numbers. Mighty Potter's chasing. Appreciate it. It's probably going to go chasing. So, um, Already yeah, has. I would imagine it'll be. Well, there you go. So I, I, I would imagine it'll be a fairly small field when we get to March. But let's just focus on the performance in Newcastle. It was just breathtaking, wasn't it? It was. And like that moment, the. The first uh, hurdle in the straight where um, Epitant, like at least visually on the TV, uh, looked like she was vaguely closing in on him. She kind of missed it, but like he just literally put the race to bed in um, a split second. And for me, given the pearls of British racing I face at the moment with the lack of um, big fields, uh, prize money, um, ground issues, so on and so forth, this is great for racing that we have a horse that people will be talking about for the next four months in the sense of um, hopefully taking on Honeysuckle, but the fact that he could genuinely be one of the greats. He's trained by Nicky Henderson. Um, there's a bit of nostalgia about it, and um, I think it's fascinating. And just mention Nicky Henderson as well, um, Flynn. He trains uh, Jet Power, who won on Friday at Newbury, and it was a weekend in which uh, I know Constitution Hill took um, you know, so many of the headlines, but some really good performances from Newbury to Navin, um, some very good novice performances. This fella doesn't look bad either, and he, I imagine now for the Supreme, he's going to be take pretty high rank uh, despite the presence of Fasal Vega in the market. Yeah, I believe he's taken a position of second in. Uh, Fasal Vega 74, Jet Powered into 6-1. to one. Did, It did look a bit of a machine, and uh, but I mean, Fasal Vega has just proved so much already of, of what engine Fasal Vega has. And, uh, but Jet Power looks, uh, looks like it's going to be a decent, um, a decent adversary come, um, uh, come when we get to March time. So that's just another one to be interested in. You, you might, um, you might take some solace as well if you're opposing the favourite that American Mike was stuffed at Navin. Now, apparently, ex- there is an excuse for American Mike, but um, I, I, I for one thought that. Um, American Mike was quite short yesterday in the, in, the, in the sense that he'd already proven that he was inferior to at least one horse but apparently there was an excuse but if you are picking some sort of a hole in Fasal Vega you might point to that Yeah I mean American Mike was just very 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 poor wasn't he um, at Navin um, what, uh, was actually a very bad result of which was surprising when I came in this morning because usually when they're around three on two to seven they're hard to lay but uh, we laid 10 grand out of one to three. Uh, we laid a 7,000 to two on. So there was a few... I could not see it. There was, like, oh, in, that, uh, in that cost of hunting group, there was a general consensus that he was too short. And I have to say, the guy who laid the winner at 499 to one in running, I mean, that must be one of the worst lays I've ever seen. Uh, like, have you not watched racing at Navin? Things change radically because it's a stiff finish. The two horses in front probably went a bit hard as well. He's a strong stayer in the flat. And I know that I didn't back him. I'm, I'm knocking the trumpet out. Made of mine back him at 160 in running. But how do you lay that? I mean, the, the horse was, he was never like totally out of sight and maybe there was an excuse for American Mike. If you are uh, inclined to give up on him, maybe you don't because Gordon Elliott says he's better than that. He did give him as his horse to follow last year, but he is under a cloud after that. Oh yeah, definitely. And one I wouldn't uh, put you off from, I'm, I'm, I'm just going, scrolling through the Albert Barlow market because that's where American Mike was at the figurehead of. He was, um, he's in, he's out to nine to one now, American Mike, so a big drifter. But another one for Gordon would be Music Drive that's come over a couple of times to Cheltenham. Um, look, looks a plodder. I think he'll run a lot of times, and I think he'll probably come to the other battle with a lot of runs under his belt. He's around 40 to 1. But yeah, back, uh, back to the drawing board for American Mike, and maybe um, have to have a proper, proper rethink. Um, I would imagine they'll probably put, uh, put him away for a little bit now and, and figure out what was wrong. But just to spin for a couple of the other performances, uh, just to go, to go back to Newcastle, we had a really good card as a bookmaker uh, here because Mufasa was stuffed at 4 to 9. Lord Rocco beat at 15 to 8, very well bat. Sergeant Will, 10 to 11, who was 7 to 4 in the morning, went off 10 to 11, that got beat. Uh, Captain Quint was 5 to 2 in the morning, Sean in 7 to 4, that got beat. So, we had a very good day in Newcastle. Long press did get favour of backers off to 
um, uh, off to a kind of a, a winning end um, in in the last races. Now it's five to one for the King George, and seven to one for the Gold Cup. It was a, a very good weight carrying performance. I think it won off around one sixty four. So one six four, um, yeah. Given and the runner off rate is one hundred and thirty eight. Some discrepancy. Yeah, so and and they did it uh, pretty cozily. I thought long press in the end. Uh, uh, Venetia's horses are seeing him to come to the boil uh, at the moment. So do keep do keep an eye on the, uh, Venetia's. I think she's got a couple running this weekend, but we'll touch on them in a bit. Uh, moving on to Newbury, you touched on Nicky Henderson. Uh, I want to mention another one of his. That's Lucia. Uh, was very very impressive. Really like this performance. Now um, is into four to one for the mayor's novice hurdle. So do keep an eye on Lucia. Was really impressive at Sandown. Uh, look look green as grass still here at Newbury, but. Uh, it was a really, really good performance. Uh, I wouldn't put you off doubling that with Brandy Love for the Mares. If you wanted to bat two in the Mares, um, you could have Brandy Love in the Mares hurdle, who's very, very well touted, beating Love Envoy last year, um, and then Lucia in the Mares and Obvious Hurdle. I wouldn't put you off uh, those two uh, in terms of the Mares. And then just the other races at Newbury, um, didn't have a bunch of great results in Newbury, to be honest. We had the favourite win in the Coral Gold Cup in Les Milos. Uh, obviously a good plot from... Uh, Harry and Dan Skelton, well back into nine to two, were strong in the market all day, to be honest. Didn't really short and right in, which is always around that six on the exchange. He's short and it's around five point, uh, five point six, maybe at one stage, but didn't really get much bigger than that. So it was just um, very, very strong in the market. And we know that when the market's strong for these Skelton horses, it tends not to be uh, too far off the mark. Um, we didn't see any huge, huge bets, but a few bets were flying around in the thousands at Newbury. And just one more race to talk about would be the Novice Chase. Time Hill was quite disappointing in the Grade 2 Novice Chase. Uh, we had quite a big bet in the shops at 10 to 11 the night before. Um, obviously, incurred a big a big rule four. Um, but McFabulous was very, very good, I thought. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was uh, the racing on uh, Saturday. Uh, the the big dog was uh, decent in the Troy Town, wasn't he? Uh, Collaring lifetime ambition on the running. That was a 20 grand swing for us between those two horses. Oh, wow. um, so we're pretty happy. Uh, with the result there. But that was the weekend racing. But we've got loads to look forward to this week, Johnny, on the racing front, haven't we? We do. I, I actually tipped the big dog and um, watching the race, um, I'm amazed that yeah. he won because he was so big at a lot of his fences. Lost ground at, I'd say, half a dozen fences. Um, so it, with regards to Aintree, which has kind of been, I think, his general aspiration, um, certainly since Limerick, anyway, and probably before it as well. I'm not sure how he's going to jump at Aintree. Um, I would be a little bit put off with the way he jumped, but a brilliant performance and... Um, Thought he was a, I thought he was a lively player, given that he's, you know, the Limerick form looked very good. But this weekend is going to be, um, it's going to be fantastic. The the whole honeysuckle. I mean, I'm, I've just come off another podcast where their presenter is saying, if I owned her, I'd retire her rather than get stuffed by Constitution Hill. Do you get the feeling if Honeysuckle were a human, she would have um, some Conor McGregor esque type type responses to uh, that sort of suggestion? I think she's going to come out fighting on Sunday. But if if some of these fifteen that are entered uh, turn up, we're going to have a hell of uh, a hell of a race card on Sunday uh, in Fairy House. And um, yeah, there's lots to look forward to. Yeah, definitely, and 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 this side of the sea as well on Saturday. I'm actually going to unfortunately no for any hollow, but yeah, you you are you are on a jolly, I believe. I am uh, me and Rory, who looks after the football here, and uh, Revs, who used to work here. We we tend to go every year, or uh, me and Ross do normally. Um, it's one of the best days of the year because you get the train up to Isha, you get there for about tenish. Uh, racing starts at Aintree at quarter to twelve. This um, is this is just. Starts. I mean, if Carlsberg did days out. Uh, oh, stunning. Uh, and then Sandown starts at midday. Uh, so all the racing is done by half three. You've got a World Cup game, uh, knockout game at three o'clock, and then you've got a knockout game at seven. So uh, what is uh, not to like about this? But just in terms of what we've got on the website uh, at the moment, Anthony Post, you've got the beach over at Aintree. Been a bit of a gamble here for Guest Gill, who was second over the national fences uh, in their previous meeting, into seven to two, around seven to two, four to one, was fast finishing second to our dancer over a short trip. Um, six-year-olds do very, very poorly in this race. So do just watch out uh, if you're backing that one at short price. Uh, Ashdown Lad, for me, looked like the one uh, probably to be getting on. It's around four, five to one, uh, four, four to one with us here. Um, ran a very, very good trial for last time and the extra uh, kind of distance will will suit Ashdown Lad. But now that's a very competitive race. And then we've obviously got the Tingle Creek, which is one of the features over um, in this country for this, uh, uh, for the national hunt season. Let me just get the light back on. There we go. Um, Shishkin's even money so Shishkin's in there uh, he's been left in by Nicky Henderson the Greener team's 15 to 8 Edward Stone 7 to 2 America Me's still in there at 9 to 2 and then 8 to 1 bar that Shaq and Porsoir who came over for the race last year um, all re- revolves around wherever Shishkin goes but I, don't, I, I actually like Edward, Edward Stone here I think that Sandown will really really suit Edward Stone um, it's not a track where you can uh, on the chase course that you can really get too far behind 
Um, sorry, it's easy to get far behind because the, the uh, fence has come so thick and fast. I think Shishkin could just, if he just makes a mistake of one of those, he, he's not the, the kind of niftiest over his um, fences. And I thought that Edward Stone, it, it would probably suit him. So keep an eye on Edward Stone. That's at 7-2. to two. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what Willie brings over. Uh, we haven't actually got it priced up yet, but the Henry VIII novice chase, uh, John Bond's entered in that. So it looks like it could be a bit of a star-studded uh, lineup. Um, I do actually have a couple of tips for Saturday, even though the races aren't up yet. But do keep an eye on these. Um, one that I've been waiting to come back out in this race in the, in the 240 at Aintree um, is Clan Legend. Won the race last year um, when the first time up. He's a very old horse. He's 12 years old, right? And there's some very uh, un unexposed, more looking types in this race, but uh, ran the most perfect of perfect preps for this race, over three miles on soft ground uh, at air. Uh, gets to run here off 130, uh, won this race of 133 last year. Um, did the same thing last year, ran in that race at air, came third, ran to an RPR of 135, and then came and won the race at Aintree. Um, thought he ran a perfect, perfect prep. So keep an eye on the old boy clan legend uh, in there. And then one horse that I back in this race every single year, and it's heartbreaking. And this is the last race of Sandown this year. Uh, the, the 3.30, which is the London National, uh, Beach at Abba uh, for Philip Hobbs. Loves to come second, but I don't think he's a yoke. I just think he bumps into one. He's bumped into a couple of proper good ones. Um, in, uh, in Sandown in February, he bumped into, into Le Milos, who just won the Coral Gold Cup. Um, and in this race last year, he bumped into Highland Hunter, who went on one, uh, one on one, one of the Nationals. Exactly. So... Uh, those are just two to keep an eye on. Clan Legend over uh, in the penultimate race, Aintree, and then Bisha Abbott in the last at Sandown. If they go close, you'll know that I'll be having a good day uh, on the Guinness uh, in Isha. What's the Guinness like in Isha? Uh, it's not quite the Guinness in Dublin, but when you've had three or four, it all just merges into one. This this is actually very true. Um, and that is one thing that we are very proud of in Ireland is you know we've got a really good whiskey, very good horses, um, some nice scenery, very nice butter, and basically the only place that you can get a proper pint of Guinness. Uh, I would argue. But if you do meet Flynn on Saturday, uh, do say hello. Uh, he may be on the Guinness if Daisha Abba wins the last. Uh, keep an eye out for a horse at Dundalk on Wednesday as well. I'm going to give here a Chevillion. Uh, Billy Lee rides takes over from Torka Woods, who probably gave the horse a little bit too much to do at uh, the last day. I'm just checking the time here. That runs in do 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 in the I find it here. It runs number six in the three o'clock uh, at Dundalk on Wednesdays. Keep an eye out for that in an ordinary race. And uh, yeah, that was Trader Chat. Uh, this time next week will be a lot wiser, I think, in terms of who's going to win the World Cup. And maybe Daisha Abba will have put Flynn on the Guinness. We'll talk to you next week.